You're listening to Mile High Insiders with Nick Kendall and Luke Patterson. Head on over to milehighhuddle.com for all things Broncos. Now, it's time to find out what's going on behind the walls of UC Health Training Center. Could go. So actually, right after the pod, I lost my phone last week. I don't, I don't want to. That's what I talked about Tuesday to open the show. So we'll go into that. But we found it. And uh, man, it's just good to talk some football and good to get some things are happening. Right. Like we're yeah, getting, starting to get some ideas of what's going on. Carson Wentz trade went down. We're getting the thumbs up from John as well. So uh, let's do it to it. Let's talk some Broncos football, baby. Yeah, Carson Wentz, man. We're we definitely got to get into that. But what's going Absolutely. on, Broncos Country? He's Nick Kendall. I'm Luke Patterson. This is the Mile High Insiders. John Bawana Beast on the ones and twos. Uh man. welcome. Welcome, guys. And Nick and I were just talking about the weather because uh outside of quarterbacks and the weather, uh, there's not a lot going on, right? I mean, that's kind of it in the in the country of the good U- U.S. of A. If you're down well, south. I saw today the avalanche. I'm not a hockey fan at all, but uh, there neither. was supposed to be a game outdoors with the uh, on Lake Tahoe, and it was too warm, so they canceled it, and then they gave a like yeah. salute to service to a fireman there by the name of uh, Dusty Gooch. So a uh, shout-out to Dusty Gooch, who was the fireman that they gave a shout-out to for the uh, the game today. He was trending on Twitter. I'm like, Okay, I gotta Dust, click that. What's what's Dust, going on with Dusty Gooch? Dusty right now? Gooch. No, I love it, dude. I love it. My dad's a chief. I worked in the fire department for a few years, and oh, I there can you tell go. you, awesome. Those guys ate Dusty Gooch up in the firehouse for that name. I, you know, I'm I'm sure that he just they got after it. But anyways, I Broncos if he has a Manscaped country. sponsor. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's Dusty Gooch with Manscaped. Speaking yeah, of Manscaped, you, you know what? I'm just gonna go with the Manscaped right now because let's do it, dude. I love it, man. I was wearing some Manscaped cologne, Broncos Country last night. Had a few cold pops. Got some compliments. Made me feel good. So before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's show, we have got to say hello to our presenting sponsor, Manscaped. Listen up, guys. 2020 sucked, but it's 2021 now, which means it's time to embrace the new year, new me mindset. The best way to start cultivating that is with Manscaped. Manscaped is the best in men's below-the-waist grooming, offering precision-engineered tools for your family jewels and helping 2 million men around the world keep their male grooming on point. So here's the thing, guys. If you let yourself go in 2020 while in quarantine, I get it. But Manscaped, Manscaped is here for you. They're here to get you rebooted, keep you clean, keep you shaving in 2021. Yeah, guys, I mean, Manscaped has obviously got a great line of products, but it's not just the shavers. I mean, they got, again, it's 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 the small things in life, but I really think the crop, the crop mops are fantastic. Individually packed uh, crop mops that come with 15 individually wrapped units, and uh, I am somebody who enjoys a great outdoors. Actually, one of my really good friends got me a pack rod for my birthday, and I'm going to do some backcountry fishing this year, hopefully get some trout, and one of my nice. main essentials that I'm going to be bringing, they say 10 essentials, but my 11th essential is going to be the crop mop from Manscaped, so they got great items, and I know that quarantine can let some people, you know, let some people down this year, but Manscaped's got your back, and you can take care of your hygiene with great products, such as the crop mop. Also, you mentioned that cologne. I just sprayed myself just now, the refined cologne. Yeah, It's good stuff. I mean, I it like smells it. great. So I'm not really, you know, seeing too many people these days outside of the wife, but it's got the wife's approval and you know any of you married folks out there know that's all that really matters well and you know what's funny about that nick is i put some on before the show too i think it's kind of one of those things i don't know why either because i'm not gonna i'm not you're not sitting here smelling me and i'm not sitting there smelling you and broncos country you're not doing it either thank goodness but it's just kind of one of those things where it like boosts your confidence you feel good you look good you smell good you feel good right yeah i mean some people like the smelling salts right this puts us in the right mind of action you You get that scent and you're like oh we're ready to do some podcasting. Exactly. So that's the thing, guys. Come out of quarantine well groomed. And here's the thing: the lawnmower 3.0. This thing is fantastic. This is waterproof, and the skin safe trimmer will reduce nicks to your two best friends. The third generation trimmer even has a light to illuminate those hard and awkward spots in 2021. Here's the thing: Manscaped even threw in their shed travel bag to keep all your goodies stored comfortably. Speaking of comfort, the Manscaped anti-chafing boxer briefs are also included and are hands down the best underwears you will ever wear. 2020 was awful. So guys, be sure to make sure you're right. Get your boys refreshed and get ready for a new beginning in 2021. Embrace that new year, new me mindset with Manscaped. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code HUDDLE at Manscaped.com. Your family jewels will thank you. 
Yeah, guys, that's right. Get 20% off on top of free shipping if you use the code huddled at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com if you use the code huddle. Happy New Year. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day coming up. Uh, Spring's just around the corner. You know, you got to take care of yourself, and that starts with taking care of the boys, and you can do that with Manscaped. I love it, dude. Manscaped's got our back. And speaking of having your back, Broncos country has always had our back, and I could see a huge following right now with uh, over 100 folks it looks like we've got four likes get those little thumbs up and get at us broncos country because we are the mile high insiders on your saturday night if you're watching on facebook or want to get in on facebook facebook.com forward slash mile high huddle pod you can find us on twitter at mhi underscore football pod he's at nick kendall mhh i'm at luke patterson lp you can find great content on our official twitter feed at mile high huddle this is the Overtime Podcast Network. And here we go. All right, Nick, it seems like we are just the, the quarterback, man. It's There's not a day or a week that goes by without uh, grumblings, rumblings, action. I mean, it's the off season, and uh, the Broncos are bad, and they're bad and boring. But, man, yeah. as a writer, as an analyst – we're busy, dude. We're really busy, not just preparing for the draft, but trying to catch up with some of the news. What do you make of just this? I don't know how to describe it. It feels like it's a forever changing landscape of what the Broncos are going to do at the quarterback position. Well, I mean, make no mistake about it. They are in the quarterback market right now. Drew Locke has some upside. He showed well down the stretch. He's still young. He's still under contract very cheaply for the next two years. But, you know, Vic Fangio, Peyton, uh, Shermer looking for an upgrade for Drew Lock in the very least competition. So it's going to continue to be a topic until it's not. Uh, the Broncos are going to continue to be one of the odds on favorites for the quarterbacks that are available just because they're one of the teams that are active right now. I mean, it's just process yep. of elimination. They're one of the teams that are looking. So it doesn't mean that they are going to bring in anybody splashy. A lot of things can happen. You know, it could range from getting Deshaun Watson all the way down to bringing in like a Nick Foles or something. You know, there's a wide range of outcomes. Uh, but the Broncos aren't in the worst position. They have an upside quarterback that's shown he can play in the league, and there's still upside there to, to go with. You know, there's there's tangible uh, play that he can still reach. So they're not in the worst spot, but still, it's going to continue to be a conversation until it's not. And that's on Drew Locke. If he would have played better last year, then we wouldn't be in this conversation, but here we are. So we got a lot of people coming in. Buana's working the ones and twos in the background. Swink McLeod, hello all. Hello to you, Swink. I see Madungas is in the chat. Uh, CG Orange Crush. Obviously, we got uh, Tyler Randall. Let's get in this first super chat right here. I'm going to click on this one, Buana, here real quick. Okay, just wanted to pop in and show some love. We love you for that, Tyler. Uh, keep up the great work, Denver Broncos for life and state of being. Well, Tyler, we, we really do appreciate you swinging by. Hopefully, you will continue to join in and join in on the conversation, guys. You obviously don't have to donate to flash you up here to see you. We, yeah, we, that's right. We're here for the conversation as well. You guys dictate what Luke and I talk about. I mean, you're just as much about it as we are. Um, Muhammad Badri coming in, the man always rocking that merch. Uh, he says Braun and the smooth killer in the house. I'm I'm digging the Braun. I don't know if again. Is that I a, so? I asked. I, yeah. So I asked Buan about that, and I actually it was funny because I heard that Muhammad gave you a nickname at first, and you didn't like that one. So then <laughs> Snow, you, had yeah. get, you had to get a second nickname. Is that? Is, is, do I understand that right? Because yeah. I mean, once I found this out, I had to sit on it so we could get it on air. I could get you to blush just a little bit. I do blush really easily. Um, yeah, John, it's just such, I mean, he's like the main protagonist, but he's just so like prissy and like always just like moody. And I don't know. I'd rather have somebody with a little bit more wit and that like, Braun definitely has that. I always thought he was funny and I didn't want to be Tyrion because that's just too obvious. So I uh, went with Braun there, but I pr- appreciate it. He's, he's a good one. I, I you know, got to give some shout out to some of those guys that those oh, dude. auxiliary characters that really make the shows like that. But uh we also got another super chat right here. I'm going to pull that one up here yeah, real quick going, Moana, from Brian Greenfield. Uh, my question is, if we are willing to consider giving up enough to get Watson, don't we think we should or could go after Zach Wilson or even the number one pick for what it would take to get Watson? I mean, if the Broncos, this is an interesting, I'll kick it off to you first because I do have some ideas, but I'm curious what you have to say, Luke. Man, Zach Wilson, I feel like the buzz about him is growing, just like it's all going to be growing with the rest of these quarterbacks coming up in the draft. You're going to see, dude, I'm expecting Mac Jones. Man, he might surprise some people. I know I'm not saying he's the answer, but guys, teams get desperate to pick quarterbacks. They pick them early. Um, Man, Zach Wilson. I don't see Zach Wilson getting past a lot of teams in this draft. To me, it's still, if you love the guy, go after him. 
Um, and obviously the, the subject of the show tonight is, you know, a Houston Chronicle reporter who's in the Pro Football Hall of Fame, by the way, so not a joke by any means, uh, is saying, I guarantee you Deshaun Watson's not coming to the Broncos, and we will get to that. But to answer Brian's question, man, uh, same theory. If you love Zach Wilson and you make him your guy, you better go get him. I mean, and it's going to cost you something. So if you're willing to trade for Deshaun Watson and that doesn't work out or manifest itself or nothing happens between now and the draft, yes, go draft a quarterback if you feel like that's your guy. Go get him. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I wasn't sure if it was on this show or Building the Broncos, but it was a show we had in mid-December where we were on this very topic and met with a lot of pushback. Honestly, a lot of pushback early on saying like, you know, Drew Locke hasn't shown enough. Sure. If they love one of the quarterbacks in this class outside of Trevor Lawrence, because I still am assuming he's going number one. There's mm-hmm. n- there's no reason they shouldn't at least explore the possibilities to go up for that guy. Now, obviously, there's a cost. You might be outbid by another team. There's a point where it doesn't make sense. But, uh, you know, if there's a guy you love in the draft, you go get him, because you just don't know what Drew Locke yet. And if you don't know, you have to at least look at the possibilities. I do think, though, there is a little bit of a distinction between trading for a Deshaun Watson versus trading for a draft, and that is just the known quantity. I mean, you already know that Deshaun Watson... 25 years old and also under contract for a while. I mean, it's not like it's this worst, worst contract ever. And honestly, there's TV money coming down the tracks here pretty soon. There's going to be new TV deals with the NFL and the cap is going to balloon after that. And Deshaun Watson's contract is probably going to look like, you know, in that 10 to 15 range after that huge surplus comes down the line. Now we might be talking one or two years down the line, but still that it's not going to be a big deal. Everybody's like, Oh, you can't pay him. A lot of that guarantee is going to stay with Houston if he does get traded. So it's going to be a very palatable contract. He's still 25. Uh, oh, yep. He's already a top five, top six quarterback in the NFL. It's a known quantity. And if the costs are anywhere similar between trading up for a quarterback, getting from like nine to three or two versus trading for Deshaun Watson, which honestly the, the package would be probably similar because you only can trade three years worth of picks or up to three years in the future. Um, then you lean Watson, I mean, known quantity, already a top 20, already a top five quarterback. Next 10 to 15 years. I mean, he, he's good. You don't know if... Trey Lance, if Mac Jones, if Zach Wilson, if Justin Fields are going to be good, you know, Deshaun Watson is good. Yeah, yeah, that's just it, man. He's a proven commodity. Uh, there's yeah. not a price tag in the world. But don't forget, Broncos country, we are the Drew Lock haters. I mean, the MHI uh, football podcast here on your Saturday night. So I've just started to embrace it, dude. I'm I'm embracing it full on, man. Yep, I do. I I I can't stand him. Uh, it's just too much. I, I'm going to go full Colin Cowherd here in a oh, second God. and Back start and guy. start getting after people that wear their hats backwards and played AAU basketball. How ridiculous was that, by the way, dude? Like. We get it, dude, but stop beating a dead horse, man. You want to talk about a hater, dude. Well, Colin Cowherd, how about how about his comments this week, Nick? I mean, that's just uh, what, having a take to have a take. You have a certain yeah. amount of airtime and you don't know what you're talking about. And Colin, I mean, I know he had like a heart scare recently. Like okay. he had to be taken to the hospital and he was out for a bit. Uh, so, I mean, maybe he's not up to date on everything, but uh, that's one of those things where, okay, we have a certain amount of time. Let's get an inflammatory comment out there and see how much traction we can get. And, you know, I'd, Respect the game. I get it. You're getting views. Sure. We're talking about it right now. You know, sure. you did it. But uh, I'm not putting <laughs> any stock in that at all. Um, <laughs> but I'm putting some stock here in this comment from Zach yeah. with his uh, beautiful bride here. Congratulations. Oh, hey, that's a recent one. What's um, up, brother? Luke, Nick, and company, keep up the great work and go Broncos. Also, Deshaun to Denver, whatever it takes. Uh, mm, I man, love that's it. That's something we should talk about, too, at some point. About, like, wh- at what point is it too much to go get Deshaun Watson? Because you've said whatever it takes. I think there's probably a line where it's like, you know, I don't know if it's worth giving up that much pieces to go get him because you're really killing yourself. Uh, but it, I, I don't know that we'd have to actually parse through that to really get to that line. Um, but let's get to the topic of choice here. We talked up, you kind of teased it a second ago, uh, John yep. McClain, he, uh, writer for the Houston Chronicles, I believe who's been an insider for the Texans organization for a while. I would compare him. I would say he's essentially the, the Mike Kliss for the Houston Texans media. You know, he's a guy yep. who's probably as, plugged in, connected as anybody, you know, one of the first ones. If there's a breaking story, other guys will sometimes get it. You know, that's true, too. But I would say that Mike Kliss is probably how about, the how about Jeff face. How, how about Jeff Legwald? Ooh. So we okay, can keep he's it kind of like ESPN. I don't know if he writes, say, though. That's the thing. And yeah. Jeff is Jeff is like one of our idols, right? I mean, he's yeah, like one Jeff. of the best writers of all time, dude. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's right here in our backyard. So it's tough, man, because, yeah, like you're saying, dude, you're trying to not hey, just build this guy up, but you're trying to just be accurate here and telling these guys like, hey, this is a dude who is in the know. This is a guy who 
deserves respect. I mean, go over to his Twitter, dude, and just see, yeah. you know, but he does cause some trouble. Nick, he loves to cause some trouble. And uh, he was on the Denver radio for two days. I know he was on the fan and then he went to KOA also. And that's where uh, we're hearing these guarantees. He says, I guarantee you Deshaun Watson to Denver will not happen. And uh, when I heard it, it made me mad. When you heard it, it I don't, I don't want to speak for you, but I, I, think, I think you looked Big at I it roll. and it was like, how silly, how silly is this? You know, he and, also guaranteed that he, he was more likely to be the next head coach of the Houston Texans rather than, uh, Deshaun Watson being traded. So uh, we're already past that point, and that point is going to keep moving. You know, that's just how it is. So, uh, yeah, it, it will be interesting. But still, he said that the New York Jets are the number one team right now. McLean was the one who also said D Hopkins isn't getting traded. Thank you, yep, Jordi, Jordi Lopez, very much. We're going to get to that as well. He, I mean, again, I don't want to say that he's state media because he is one of the better, more respected guys in Houston, but you have to understand there's a spin on this, and he is being directly fed from the Texans organization. And because of that, it is going to be a front of what is best case scenario for the Houston Texans. First, it was not trading Deshaun Watson because your top top five quarterback under 25 years old. Of course, you don't want to trade him. God, right. Duh. Right. So now it's like, oh, he might be traded, but the only team he's really going to be possibly going to is the team that can offer us far and away the most draft capital. The doy, that's what the Houston Texans would want. The team that has the number two overall pick, another first round pick this year, can offer a two first round picks in 2022 as well. I mean, duh. Of course, if the Texans had their way and they had to trade Deshaun Watson, right. it would be to the Jets. But that doesn't get into the fact that there's this no trade clause. The Jets have been exactly. a horrible organization forever. We, forgot, I mean, about, we forgot about the no trade clause, right, Nick? We, we, we just we don't even want to talk about that. And DNV three coming in. Did uh, <laughs> can we throw that back up there? I'll read it. Uh, did John McClain forget Watson has a no trade clause? That's exactly it. So Broncos country, I don't get your daubers down. I, I get that everybody's still a little upset about Nolan Arenado and all that stuff. And, you know, I mean, you can't watch the Nuggets and the Avs. Yeah, I, I don't care. I'll be straight up honest. I don't care. Football is the only thing that matters in my life. <laughs> and your like, family in, in and terms daughters. Of, no, in terms of sports, though, dude, there is nothing. I mean, college football is even a distant second just because I'm mm. trying to just outside of the draft, man. This is just the the king. This is the king, yeah. dude. Football is life, man. And uh, Broncos country do not fall for the banana in the tailpipe. And here's the thing, man. I'm always saying watch out for the Broncos spin. Well, Nick is saying watch out for the Texans spin because, guys, every team spins things to reporters. Every team has uh, – I don't want to use the word mouthpiece because that's very disrespectful. I see that floated out there a lot. But teams have sources – that they like to give info to at certain times when it's most beneficial to them. So I think that's one of those things that we're seeing right now with the Houston Texans, the PR with the Houston Texans and the rest of the world right now is just awful. So why wouldn't you come out and say an outrageous statement like this? I mean, it makes sense, but I don't think it's accurate. I'm not putting a ton of weight into it. Um, everybody's got narratives, Nick. Everybody's got narratives, man. And uh, it's this every- time of year, man, it's it, you, when you hear like, oh, I heard from sources. First off, what why is that source leaking that information and what do they have to gain from that information getting out there? You know, obviously, there's a lot of information out there and a lot of misinformation out there. But something like this is like, well, I think the reason that this is happening is because, uh, you know, it's coming from the Texans. Oh, the team that he's most likely to go to is the Jets because they can offer far and away the most. Here's your sign. Like, right? Like, right. duh. So we'll see what happens. I mean, I know that this is something interesting, too. Uh, it seems like on a lot of sports bookies right now, um, the Broncos are now becoming the number one favorite outside of the Texans for where yeah. Deshaun Watson will land. Do you have any thoughts on that? Yeah. Chad just threw down a uh, an article on milehighhuddle.com talking about that. And I loved it, dude. I think the Broncos are at plus 150 and the Texans are at plus 300. So Broncos have twice as likely a chance, according to the wise guys in Vegas, of landing Deshaun Watson than the Texans are of keeping him. Uh, I think that's very interesting. It's not something that I'm going to go start getting ready for a Deshaun Watson jersey or anything like that. But I think it shows you there's what happens, Nick, when there's smoke, there's usually fire, right? So we know that these phone calls are being made. We know that the Broncos are trying. I talked to some insiders too, and they're like, look, man, they're going after the big fish. The big fish are Deshaun Watson and maybe Russell Wilson, if that even happens. And that's a big if, 
but they don't Dak Prescott. really Dak Prescott. I'm not hearing a lot about Dak, man, with that second surgery. Oh, Palmer is the one who said they would go after Dak if he became available, but they are ex- okay. exceedingly unlikely. I mean, we saw what happened to the Texans or the Cowboys this year after Dak went down. I mean, he was throwing 400 yards a game and losing games like 42 to 35. Yeah. Like your defense sucks. It's not on Dak. Um, but uh, if he becomes available, that might change things. Yeah, and that's just it, man. And then you're going to have to figure out which which direction you want to go. But that's that's another thing I wanted to ask Broncos country and ask you. I mean, if you're the Houston Texans, yeah, you guys have a little bit of power. Deshaun has a little bit of power. But, I mean, sooner or later, someone's got to flinch. If you're the Houston Texans, when are you going to get this deal done? Because what if the draft comes and goes, Nick? The draft comes and goes, and the Houston Texans are sitting there in training camp, and Deshaun Watson's not there. Then what? Then his price tag goes down, right? I mean, then then the draft has happened. Teams have started to formulate a plot. Um, could they try to get away with a little bit of a steal at that point? A team like the Broncos? I don't know because I wrote about it with my Jacoby Brissett article, and it was like, look, George Payton, you need to make a decision, dude. Like, you need to either offer them something that they will not refuse. I feel like Don Corleone here, or um, go another direction. It's that simple. And that other direction could be the draft. You could fall in love with a quarterback and go get him, a Trey Lance, a Zach Wilson. Go get him. Go get him. But this is taking a long time, and I'm getting impatient because, dude, it's tis the season, right? Tis the season. It's the season of lies, but it's the season where you got to get stuff done. Free agency is opening up relatively soon. The Broncos have have tons of decisions to make here in this next week with regards to Justin Simmons and Vaughn Miller and some of these things like that. So, dude, George Payton's got to make some decisions, man. Which way do you want to go? I will push back a little bit uh, with the quarterback situation is that the Broncos are in a good spot because of the contract situation with Drew Locke. They're not a team that has massive uh, financial commitments to their quarterback position in general, which means that they can play the long game. They can wait out a little bit and see what happens. Um, and that means, thank you, Jay, for that. Uh, they can see what happens. And let's get back to Dak here real quick with a, yeah, this is, this is not exactly Dak, but this makes me think of Dak. Um, I love that picture. It, yeah, right. Uh, DeHayen <laughs> coming in here. Uh, I've heard that the lack of team ownership and liquid cash is a potential issue with the Watson contract. Can you explain like I'm five? Um, well, I think that with Watson, maybe it's not as much of an issue uh, because the thing with these contracts, and it would be an issue with Dak Prescott if the Broncos were able to go get him, is that when you pay a contract for a player, you have to be able to put that player's entire signing bonus into escrow which means that let's say you get like a $200 million signing bonus that's prorated at over the salary cap over the duration of that contract, you still have to pay everything up front. So a team like the Broncos right now that are, you know, a little bit cash poor, the unknown ownership, I mean, they can take out loans and get some money still, but still, it's, that's not exactly what you want to do from an organizational, organizational standpoint. Um, so Watson's guaranteed money is already paid. That's going to stick on that Watson contract. There's going to be dead cap. I mean, we saw with, was it Carson Wentz contract? It's like $30.3 million dead cap for the Eagles this year. That's because that's the dead cap um, with the guarantees and that signing bonus sticking on that contract with the Eagles. So really, it's not as much of an issue with uh, someone like Deshaun Watson. I think Deshaun Watson's also only scheduled to make like $10.5 million against the cap this year that is his, um, on his salary cap hit. So he's he's a great salary cap option for the Broncos. Actually, I don't know if the liquid cash is at all an issue. Now, that does mean there's a little bit of pressure to get this ownership situation solved because there are some big cap hits coming down the line. Uh, but right away, I think it's actually one that's very uh, digestible for the Broncos for where they stand. This is the Overtime Podcast Network. As we talk about cap, and that was a great question. Thank you very yeah, thank much you. for the super and for joining the Mile High Insiders tonight. That was great. I loved it. And I think that was a great, great answer, dude, because uh, I needed that explained to me like I was five also because, dude, the salary cap, man, there's a reason they've got these capologists, right? And these teams got these analytic departments. These things matter, folks. Yeah, we got man, our very own Bob Morris. That's great. Dude, I want to call him the professor like John Clayton, the professor Bob Morris. We just, you start giving out nicknames because, guys, get a Bob Morris, too, on Twitter. I can't remember his Twitter yeah. handle, but go over to Mile High Huddle and you'll see some of his work. He's our capologist in Mile High Huddle, dude. He does some of the best work in terms of crunching numbers, projections. I think he's got some work coming out, if I'm not mistaken, here in this next week. And uh, he just he kills it for us, man, and absolutely slays those numbers because 
Muhammad Badri's coming in here. Help me give nicknames for Eric and Lance. Uh, dude, yeah, I, I'm not the nickname guy. I that's you, Muhammad man. I'm gonna just defer to you, brother, because I don't wanna I don't wanna rattle any feathers with my MHH brethren. So the pinky Muhammad, in the brain. The pinky in the brain. There you go. I like that. <laughs> you know, well, and Eric, yeah, Eric, Eric and Lance. We'll have to think about that one, you know, because they both Wyoming guy and then an Alaska guy. It's a it's a odd pair, but they do very well. And you can catch them every Friday night for the Dove Valley Deep Divers. But as we go, yeah. I want to say hi to Richie Rich. What's going on, buddy? I see you in the house. Charlie Beagle, Travis Weber coming James in Campbell. here. Yeah, James, our own James Campbell, Robert Caslow, Chase is in here. If I'm not saying your name correctly, correctly, let me know. Dylan Von Ark's coming in here. What's up, Richie? Um, yeah, dude, we've got all kinds of stuff going on. And EA Shalom is coming in here. When is Watson due money? That will be the deadline to move him or not. And Nick, I'm going to go ahead and pull up Deshaun Watson's contract info right now. So, yeah, a lot of, like I said, a lot of his signing cap money, that's prorated over the duration of his contract year after year. It's kind of just a, it's a financial move. It's a way to make the money clean. Um, and those guys are paid up front, though. That signing cap and all that stuff, the signing bonus is all paid immediately, just spread out over the duration of the contract. Um, he has a really palatable uh, salary cap hit this year. I want to say it's $10.5 million, something around there. Then Boom. it jumps up. To, is it 10.5? That number just sticks well, out in my so, head. So 10.5 is the guaranteed salary for this year. So yes. just just full transpar- transparency, uh, base salary of 10.5, the prorated, bo- prorated main- bonus. Um, the that, <laughs> yeah, that one looks like a 5.4. And then guaranteed salary, 10.5. The cap number is actually sitting at, uh, looks like 15.9. Okay, well, I'm, I would need to look at it myself to see how it's all set up. They have it set up a... Very interesting way to read. Are you on Spock track or over the cap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm on uh, over the cap right now. So either way, it's it's a very palatable cap hit this year. Then it jumps up a lot in 2022 and 2023, I think, in that $35 million range. Um, so that's just off the top of my head from reading it and sticking in there. Um, yep. So, you know, it right. will be interesting to see what happens. And uh, there's obviously some guarantees that will come up, I believe, post-June 1st as well with how that contract is set up. So the Texans are going to have to make a decision. And there's that big, huge, impending clock that is the Hello, Jamil Killings. <laughs> Killing it. What's, What's so up, happy? buddy? Wow. Yeah, dude, I love it. I love it. We got to see more smiles in today's world, man, because yeah. uh, there's so much stress going on. If you got just enjoy the small things, smile. Hope we can make you smile, even if you guys want to take some poke fun at us for a little bit. But nope. uh, J- Jamal, thank you for uh, or Jamal. I hope I'm not mispronouncing that. Thanks for joining the MHI tonight, man. We really appreciate it. Um, um, go ahead, go. buddy. Go ahead. Mundungus, our friend. I'll take this one because Mundungus is never afraid to pull any punches. And he is a good friend of the show, along with yeah. the MHR, MHRT crew. And guys, get up, Mundungus. He's a great guy. Um, you guys will recognize some very familiar names, names that have been on the show, guests, regular Super Chat superstars, just like Mundungus. I think the queen of MHH herself is also on there. So go check out MHRT, man. They'll really appreciate it. And they're a fun show. They're yeah. a great group of guys and gals. And here comes Mundungus with a 999 Super. Appreciate you, brother. Happy belated birthday, by the way. On MHRT, yeah. we talked about what quarterbacks are an actual upgrade over Locke that are worth trading for and what quarterbacks are only to be signed as a backup. What is that cutoff? Mundungus, that's a fantastic way of looking at things because you're using your brain. Anyone that breathes oxygen has to understand that, look, you're either going to get a superstar quarterback and he's your guy, or you're going to bring in competition for Drew Locke. Here's the thing. Can that competition beat Drew Locke? Uh, I think a lot of them can, Nick. I think a lot of them can. And they're obviously going to be being paid more money than Drew Locke. I think that is very likely. You're going to see a veteran quarterback coming in here rather than just saying, oh, yeah, we're going to just go sign a, a number two for signing a number two. Jeff Driscoll, like last year, and it just didn't work out. So the Broncos have to look at this as another potential starting quarterback coming in, whether I like it or not, because I don't like it. I don't like Andy Dalton. That's why I liked Jacoby Brissett. I'm like, dude, he's, you know, they're not not, (laughs) neither. Yeah, that's that's it, man. Neither one of them, you know, like light my world on fire. Ryan Fitzpatrick and stuff like that, too. But if we're being real. Yeah, if we're, if we're being real, those are the options, Nick. And I think Mundungus yeah. hits, the, hits the nail on the head there. What say you? 
I mean, that's kind of the guys that are available, right? Like if you have a good quarterback and you're not a complete incompetent organization like the Texans have become, you hold on to that guy until maybe the very end of their contract. Now, obviously there are some weird situations. You see guys like Ryan Tannehill, who knows what will happen with a guy like Sam Bre- uh, Sam Darnold. But uh, typically, if you have a good quarterback, you don't let them go. And sometimes that's to the detriment of the team. You know, you see guys getting paid like Andy Dalton getting that second contract. A stupid idea. They should have just used him as a rookie contract and then said, you know what? Seen enough. Let's let, let's let you go. And that's not a bad strategy either. I think more teams should do that. You know, you don't want to be paying 12%, 15% of your salary cap to a quarterback that's in that top 10 to 20 range. And a lot of teams do that and then they get s- stuck and sunk. So it's a really, that is an interesting question. It's just the guys that are available. One name, I got to say, I was walking the dog last night and I was thinking, this would be a really interesting one. So there's a lot of teams that so are Miller. in. Hello, Miller. Good to see a cute dog. I'm all about the dogs these days. Um, also, we got A. Savage coming in. Hey, Broncos country. Yeah. Um, so up, man? some older names, some guys that might become available. I know there's been some jokes about, you know, Drew Brees coming back and his arm falling off, blah, blah, blah. What if this guy became available? It's a team that really needs to clear some cap room. They Their window is probably closed. And there's been some interesting conversation between the two parties that, like, you know, this might be the end for this quarterback and this team. Ben Roethlisberger. Yep. If Ben Roethlisberger became available, would you be interested? Now, I know it's the end of his career. He is a not a great dude, but he's still got talent. He's definitely raises the floor of the room, and he's somebody that I could see Vic Fangio saying, he's a known quantity. I know what I'm going to get from him, and if I can, you might even be able to trade like a six-round pick for him, a fifth-round pick, because this is the end of the road, and they're not going to be able to swallow his his contract. Interesting. So if, somebody, if Ben Roethlisberger became available, that's one that like nobody's talked about yet that I was like, the Steelers really might be forced to move it. To move him because they just don't have the room for him. Nick is, of course, referencing the news that broke this week that the Steelers are not committing to Ben Roethlisberger exactly. right now. That's been the shocker, right? And yeah. we see how these things work out, like with Tommy last year, right? The Wonder Patriots and other opens. Yeah, yeah, Patriots aren't committing to Tom Brady. I mean, obviously, different <laughs> circumstances, but Nick, that's a question. I, I, man, I don't have an answer for you. I guess I'd have to really give that some thought. Uh, initially I want to say no right away, but then I start thinking and like you, I'm thinking, okay, known commodities. Fangio does like that. Um, Short Uh, term. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the offense that much because Ben Roethlisberger can come in and I, and I don't love Ben Roethlisberger. Don't get me wrong, but he's a future hall of fame quarterback. And if you're looking for it, like, especially somebody like Vic Fangio, somebody to get me over this hump to get me into contention this year. I, I just think it's one that is, is interesting and Big Ben is washed up, won't make this team anywhere. I mean, this is what people were saying about Tom Brady last year, and I I definitely think you have some merit to that. But let's say if your options are Andy Dalton or Big Ben, I might lean for Big Ben just because then I worry less about the offense. Here's another thing though that bothers me. You're right, you're right. I would lean Big Ben too, but man, he's Big Ben, dude, is beat up. He's beat up. He's taken so many shots. His health is such a problem every year, and I just feel like we're watching a great, an all time great, just die really slowly his career. And it's sad. And I don't like it, man, because Ben, I hate the Steelers. I hate them a lot. Not as much as the Raiders, but dude, they're, they're, they're a classy organization. Ben is obviously Love uh, Tomlin. I'm a big Mike Tomlin fan. Yeah, dude. I mean, like the Steelers are popular. We all watch the Steelers and make sure that we are keeping yeah. tabs. This is the overtime podcast network. And speaking of Keeping tabs. Brian Greenfield is always keeping tabs on MHH, a huge one of our Super Chat superstars. Hope you're doing well, Brian. Thanks for joining us on Saturday night. Nick, Brian wants to know, if you had a choice of Dak Prescott and Deshaun Watson at around the same cost, who would you prefer? So, Brian, we're assuming that a deal doesn't get done with Dak um, and you have a comparable offer that the Texans are interested in and it really comes down to the Broncos, right? Who do they want more, Dak Prescott or Deshaun Watson? What say you, Nick? I mean, if it's if both are available, Deshaun Watson's a top five quarterback and Dak's a top 10 quarterback. So that's, I mean, mm. you take Deshaun, you take Deshaun. But the thing about Dak is that if he's available, odds are it's through free agency. So you don't have to give up the ample capital to go get him. You can build a better team around him because you're not losing all those picks and players as well. If you're trading for Deshaun Watson, but I mean, I could be talking to either one. I think Dak is a really still an up and coming quarterback. You've seen him hit strides year after year. And I'm going to say this, and this might upset some people, but is there a more overrated player than Ezekiel Elliott? 
I mean, you watch that guy. He just does not have bursts. I mean, he is super overrated, and that's kind of the thing with running backs. I mean, we saw it with Todd Gurley. You know, they have one, two, three great years, and then pfft, down the crapper, and Zeke has yep. not been good. That team's been carried by Dak uh, in oh, the past sure. year and a half. Yes. So uh, I like them both. Deshaun Watson's, I mean, top five quarterback. If it's in a vacuum, give me Deshaun. Dak's, but Dak's, Dak's good, man. Dak's good, man. You're right. I don't, I'd say top 15 for Dak for me right now. So from going from top five to top 15, I'm going top five all the way with Deshaun. But Dak's interesting. Two stylistically different quarterbacks, even their physical builds. So here's the thing I like about Dak. I like his build a little bit more than Deshaun's mm-hmm. because he's a little thicker, right? A little bit sturdier of a cat, but he's yeah. got those lower leg injuries. Deshaun is also to, able to be you know he's i mean, he's cut up in an abercrombie model i'm sure but his slim body allows him to manipulate his arm it allows him to to move to be mobile not just athletic um man they're both great guys but brian i got i gotta go with deshaun man i gotta go with deshaun so uh chase coming in here chase what's up buddy thanks for joining mhi he's coming in with us zeke fell off a cliff and you guys are exactly right. And Nick loves running backs. He'll be the first to tell you. Uh, no, Zeke Zeke was extremely overpaid, in my opinion. What he did yeah. to that team and like kind of holding the team hostage, I thought was just jacked up. If you're Dak, I'm absolutely angry at that. You're going to go pay Zeke, but I can't get a contract? Give me a break. Um, it's the quarterback market too, Jerry. It's the quarterback market. Guys are going to set new numbers. That's how it goes. Whether or not they deserve the money, that doesn't really matter. <laughs> That's the thing about the business of football that people who's have got to up. understand. Exactly. And who's willing to set the market? That's something we're going to find out with Justin Simmons. And yeah. a little tease for you guys in Broncos country. He was talking to Bowanabees before the show. And uh, John is John's a sleuth, man. He's a sleuth. He's a web sleuth, a Bronco sleuth. He finds out information and gets to the dirt. He found audio and video of Justin Simmons talking about Drew Locke that's not out there right now. It will be released on milehighhuddle.com. Be sure to check at Mile High Huddle Twitter for that in the next 48 hours. And Mundung is coming in here with a 199 Super. What about Alex Smith? Oh, well, Alex Smith, I mean, I see in the comment section everybody was saying Big Ben's arm fell off, and Big Ben definitely is coming to the end. It wasn't to the extent that we saw Drew Brees this year, but another guy, I mean, Alex Smith, you know, hats off to him, you know, being coming back this year, comeback player of the year. The guy who didn't vote for him is an idiot. I'll just, I don't even know who it is, but I don't, I don't need to know. Yeah. Idiot. I don't um, need to but, know. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, Alex Smith. I think he's, uh, he's interesting and I would be interested in bringing him in, but only for super cheap. And he has a huge, I think he has a huge cap hit too. So Does he? I don't know. I mean, I might even rather bring in like that's comparable to bringing in Andy Dalton from a, a tools position at this point. So it would be interesting. Yeah. And maybe if he wants to come in, maybe you can kind of get him to be a future coach as well, if that if he's interested in that at all. But uh, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's it's tough, man. And then you know, I'm seeing in here Blake Bortles without play lock in a full off season camp. Laugh out loud, man. Okay, so here's another thing. Um, I think Chad wrote it up. Correct me if I'm wrong, John. But there was another great article, guys. Get over to milehighhuddle.com for the best Broncos coverage. Uh, we got articles. We're just we're spitting out articles on the hour nick i mean yeah. you're writing multiple articles i'm writing multiple articles chad's all over it zach's all over it keith uh you know eric's name is in there writing up articles doing videos lance carl what's going on with carl i need crazy carl in here when i'm starting to talk about betting odds and i have to look up what the betting odds are for plus 150 and the broncos getting to sean watson because carl's another one of those guys like bob a great numbers guy understands contracts be sure to get at Carl as well with building the Broncos, but uh, dude, this is the thing, man. And, and it was Colin Cowherd who came out, you know, and I'm not going to keep talking Colin, but saying Drew Locke's the, what the fifth best quarterback in the AFC West, you know, dude, we can talk about all that and rank all that. And it doesn't really matter though. Drew Locke knows he's going to be challenged. I think Drew Locke cares. I hope that Drew Locke's putting in the work. I, I heard Troy rank say that Drew Locke has been at the facility. He has been working out. Um, you know, he's talked with George Payton. So those things are happening and Drew Locke is still expecting to be here. Um, I don't think he's expecting to be the starter, but he's preparing to be the starter. And that's something that I respect. I'm really curious to see how Drew Locke is going to come out in training camp. If he's still here, um, uh, because uh, Nick, I just get the feeling and it's something I wanted to ask you. I don't think this Deshaun Watson thing is going to happen anytime soon. 
I really don't. I want it to. And I keep checking my phone every five seconds. And I was scared today earlier. I scared all of you guys. And I saw the Chicago Bears fake sports center thing with Deshaun Watson. We got him per Adam Schefter. And they totally got me. The trolls got me there. But Nick, when do you expect if this move is going to happen, if Deshaun Watson's going to be traded, when do you think that's realistically going to happen? It's really interesting because obviously we talked about it right now. The Jets and the Dolphins, two teams that have the second and third overall pick, seem to be interested. I know that the Dolphins recently had a, hey, we believe in Tua. But, you know, if you have Deshaun Watson available, you can only believe in Tua to a certain extent. Um, But you have that deadline of the NFL draft coming up. And after that, you lose a lot of value, a known value, like the team like the Jets, like the Dolphins. You know, where are they picking next year? You don't know. You don't, you have the guarantee of the second and the third pick right now, as well as both those teams having an, an additional first round pick this year. So that's the first one. The Texans, if they don't get value and they're still holding out hope, I could see them playing chicken. I mean, they did the same thing with uh, Jadavion Clowney, where they held on to him for a while and they shot themselves in the foot. They took lesser value later because they didn't trade him before the draft. And then there was less teams that were interested because they filled him out and they just didn't have the known capital to trade them. So uh, if that happens, I mean, Broncos trading down from nine this year, which it sounds like it's something that George Payton is interested in doing. Uh, if they do that and they get some 2022 capital, the Broncos are even further in the driver's seat. But the concern there is if it does hold out past the draft, then you're seeing it's open to the whole league. Then right now it's kind of based yep. on the draft order and where these teams have value in the picks. But if it's, if it comes post draft, then you're talking about teams like the bears have a, sh- a real shot. The, the Raiders Washington football team. I was going to get to it. The Raiders I have a much them. better shot as well. So I hate them. It's, I hate it's, them. you know, the Broncos might have a better chance then because then you're losing the value of the jets and the dolphins, but then like it's open for all these other teams as well. So, you know, you're, you're messing with fire there. You're playing with fire and we are yeah. always playing with fire here on MHI rocking with you guys on Saturday night. And, uh, Dehan, I hope I'm pronouncing that. Please uh, get at me again and let me know. Cause your names are important. They matter, yeah. and I don't care if they're a nickname, they're a funny name. As long as I can read it and it's appropriate, we're going to shout you out. So another question coming in, does a Sam Darnold trade cost more or less than a Carson Wentz trade? Nick, this is something we were going to get to, and I'm so glad it was brought up because Wannabeast actually has it on his Twitter account right now. He's got a poll going. Go vote. Um, in my opinion, Sam Darnold's value has significantly decreased after the Carson Wentz trade. I mean, I'm not a Carson Wentz guy, but I will tell you this, that a guy who was actually in the running for MVP, um, he's got more value than Sam Darnold, who doesn't have a big enough sample size, and it's with the Jets, okay? It's with the Jets. So I think Sam Darnold's cost is going to go down. Um, Not sure what the Jets are going to do yet, though. I mean, that Robert Sala, he's, he's playing things pretty close to the vest, just like the rest of these teams. What do you think, Nick? I think his value went down considering what the Colts did to snatch up Carson Wentz. I mean, the thing is, the Jets don't have as much, I guess, they have more leverage to hold on to Darnold. If they don't get a deal they like, it's the same thing with the Broncos. Why would they trade Drew Locke if they get a quarterback in the first? Teams need quarterbacks. It is a very valuable thing to have multiple quarterbacks. So if you don't get value you want, guess what? I'm holding on to both of them. I don't care and pay me what you want, or I'm not going to trade him. So it is one less team that's looking for a quarterback and one less team that was desperate for a quarterback. And that does limit the market, but I still think Darnold's probably going to get a decent contract. I mean, he's younger than drew lock, despite playing in the league longer. He's been in a much worse situation. I mean, you stack the Broncos offensive line and weapons next to the jets. There's probably only one player on that jets team. I'm taking over the Broncos and that's uh, Makai Becton over there. Other than that, the the offense is dreadful. I mean, the weapons they have is, is just bad. So uh, I think Darnold will get a shot. I mean, a lot of people, he was a number three overall pick for a reason. There's a pedigree there. Uh, Somebody will take him. Is he going to get a pick that's like a third round this year and a conditional pick that could could go up to a one? Probably not. Maybe not that high, but I think I could see him getting a three this year and a two next year. I mean, it's just teams are desperate, man. Teams need quarterbacks. Who is what's Washington football team going to go with next year? They're going to go with Tyler Henneke again, the corpse of Alex Smith. I just, there's desperate teams out there. Jets, Matt Nagy. I mean, this is last year. This is Ryan Pace. You know, bleeper, get off the pot. These teams got to get quarterbacks. They don't have an option. They have to pay the price. They have to pay the price, and I like that, man. That's that's just it. You you gotta you gotta pay to play, so to speak, man. And, Especially uh, when you have like you have to make it this year. 
right? Like you, your window oh, is now. Sure. If you don't oh, do it, you're yeah. fired. So that creates desperation. That's a bad place to be. And that's one thing that I keep coming back to with the Broncos. You know, like they are looking at the market, but Locke is exceedingly cheap. There's upside still there. He played better down the stretch. I know you keep, you're trying to lead into the lock hater stuff. I, I'm I'm trying to be the boring middle ground where it's like, you know, I can see both sides. No way. You know, that guy always I'm going to drag you movies. down in the mud with us. I'm going to drag you down in the mud with me, man, and get dirty with the uh, dogs because I, I am embracing it at this point because there's yeah. no change in it, man. There's no change in it. It doesn't matter how many times I spit the same garbage into this microphone of, I loved Drew Locke coming out of Missouri, okay? I loved him. Nick, I said on this show last week, I wanted him in the first round. How awful yeah. would that have been, okay? And But I just, I see, I'm not seeing what I need to see. That's it. That being said, I don't want Sam Darnold here. I'd just assume roll out Drew Locke. I don't hate Drew Locke that much. I'm not that much of a yeah. hater if I'm willing to, you know, say no to some of these quarterbacks. Because, dude, Andy Dalton, I don't want that. Roll Drew Locke out there again if that's the case. Uh, yeah, but Somebody had a good comment here. It's like, well, why would you uh, go with Darnold? You already have the same guy but cheaper in Drew Locke, somebody who turns the ball over like crazy and has high flashes but really low floors. So, uh yeah, there you go. Um, so EA Sloan coming in. And we got a super Love chat it. again from Madungas. Let's get to this real yeah, quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Houston almost has to trade Watson before the draft. Watson has already said he will sit out if he does. Uh, without a first-round pick, what does Houston do at QB? Watson has a lot of power right now. I mean, that team is in a situation where they probably just need to tear it down completely and rebuild. I mean, you have J.J. Watt out the window. It's a. I mean, Deshaun Watson was incredible last year, and they have the third overall pick. It's a bad team. It is a bad team tear it down there's no yeah. reason if you're gonna suck just own it you know you don't want and there's like the, you can be you know young and bad you can be young and good you can be old and good if you're old and bad you're done and that's where the texans find themselves right now especially on defense so just like you tear it down you tear it down you got a new team in there you got a new gm new head coach uh, trade watson and then kind of just kick the kick the can um the, we got go ahead the denver broncos think the houston texans are disorganized <laughs> It's, and that is sad. saying something. And that's not me taking a shot at the Broncos. That's me just saying something that's the truth. Denver's disorganized, too. I don't know why Vic Fan – and, dude, I know you, you'll you give me pushback right away. I don't know why Vic Fan is still here, if I'm be honest with you. Like, Mike Kliss has called this – and I love Klissy. He called him – he called this year the, the year of the lame ducks. Nick, because mm -hmm. you've got LA who's one foot out the door. You got Ellis supposedly one foot out the door. Vic Fangio is on that hot seat. It's burning up. I just, man, this very well could be the year of, you know, walk is here and then we tear it down this next year. I just, man, Deshaun Watson just, it's so, he's holding us hostage. He's holding us hostage, Nick. He's I holding mean, the it, conversations of the podcast hostage. Dude, he's <laughs> holding me hostage. He, yeah, he he just, you know, he's uh, he's in my mind. He's I got a, you know, I got tons of love for Deshaun Watson. I'm always looking for that update, but dude, that was big. John McClain guaranteeing that the Denver Broncos would not land him. Don't worry, Broncos country. Don't worry. You're still in the running says the wise guys in Vegas. And I see Richie Rich coming at me. Fangio's not the problem. Fangio's not the problem, dude. How many points did his defense give up? Was it like 437 points, 433 points, something like that? That's a problem. That's a problem. His yeah, but they had guys stuff. like you and me playing corner back there down the stretch. Like It, Ooh, it was bad. And they've, it they've was used, bad. Like, it was they've bad. used no first-round picks or second-round picks on the defense since Bradley Chubb. Uh, they haven't made big splash signings. They brought in like elderly guys for – Nothing. Jawan, I mean, everybody's like, oh, Drell Casey, he was available for a seventh round pick for a reason. AJ Boye, available for yeah. a fourth round pick for a reason. You know, this is a team that uh, they've been pouring resources in the offensive side of the ball. And hopefully there's good things down the line. You know, that's kind of their seedlings right now. There is growth to come, and that should be exciting. The offensive core, I mean, there's a reason that the Broncos are connected to Deshaun. Outside of the quarterback position, this has a great, great, oh, we're Druthers. Uh oh, Jeremy. <laughs> um, this team has a great <laughs> offensive core. They're ready Thanks, to take dude. off. It's the same thing. I mean, we saw it with the Broncos in 2012 when they had, or excuse me, 2011 to 2012. You know, you had Tebow and you had all these young weapons. Like, oh, you know, they're inconsistent. They were held back by the quarterback. You get that quarterback in there, they take off. Um, JT coming in here. I disagree. I think Fangio is an issue. Uh, he preached accountability when he came in, preached no death by inches. All I've seen is death by inches and accountability issues. His game management is poor. I mean, you got to, you can talk the talk, but you got to walk the walk. And so far, as far as clock management goes, 
Fangio has not done that. So you, you're definitely 100 percent right there. I got nothing. I got nothing to say. There. That's my biggest complaint with Fangio. No, I hear you. I don't, and I don't hate Vic Fangio. I just don't think he's very good head coach. And that's just kind of where I'm at. Like defensive coordinator, you bet. But dude, uh, look, I'm just gonna say it. The Broncos hired the wrong man, Vic Fangio. They should have hired. Uh, gosh, I can't. I'm blanking his name right now, and I shouldn't because he's our Hall of Fame offensive Mike Munchak. They should have hired Mike Munchak to run this team. You want to talk about a leader of men? Let's go that route. And then give me an offensive coordinator that's – I wonder who Mike Munchak would hire as an offensive coordinator. Uh, you know, you talk about head coach, and we were you know, talking about Mike Tomlin, dude. How great is Mike Tomlin at accountability? How great is Mike Tomlin at deviating work and responsibility to those under him? That's why you yeah. see these coaching trees have so much success. Uh, I think Vic just has a hard time with that. And Rich, I see Rich coming at me. Uh, if you could find it, Buana Beast. Rich was asking Luke, how many defensive players did we draft, you know, that were worth a squat in the first and second round and stuff like that? I hear you. I hear you. We went back to back wide receivers. I get it. We thought it was the best thing ever at the time. And the year before, all and, offense. Yeah. So I hear you. I hear you. But that's John. That's John, Rich. And John's not calling these shots anymore. Um, you know, Luke. So he's asking Luke, how many defensive players did we draft in the top four picks last year? What was the percentage of offensive picks in 2020? Luke, you're exactly right, Rich. You're exactly right. Tons of offensive picks. Um, and I'm not just going to say, well, look at Michael Jamudia and all his problems. I like that kid a lot. Yeah. I think he gets a ton of heat, and I don't know why. Uh, okay, what did he do? He threw hands once in this last year and then got plugged for a second. But, dude, this kid is going to be a baller, Nick. I like him a lot. I can finally pronounce his name. <laughs> um, but I hear you. Defense is not the problem. It's certainly not the answer. And Mundungus has been killing it all night. Byron Leftovich for a head coach. Nick, this has been an article I've been wanting to write, but I can't tie it to the Broncos because we're a year from that, dude. Like, I can't. Byron Leftwich isn't going to leave to come here. Like, let's say Deshaun Watson comes into the Mile High City. That deal gets done. Deshaun Watson says, dude, I don't want Pat Shermer here. Okay, guess what's going to happen? The Broncos are going to fire Pat Shermer. Who do you want here, Deshaun? I want... Uh, Byron Leftwich. I want uh, Eric Bieniemy. Why would they take jobs leaving Super Bowl franchises to come to the Broncos? It's not an article I can write, Nick, because I have to wait an entire year, the year of the lame duck, just to get through this, man. And it bothers me because Byron Leftwich for head coach, it's going to happen someday, dude, because I like it a lot. I'm really happy for Byron. Yeah, it's, I just kind of have a hard time putting that much blame on Vic Fangio. I mean, what he's been able to do with the defense, you know, that's his gig. And he kind of does not want to focus on the offense as much, just like Bill Belichick doesn't focus on the offense as much. He focuses on the defense and it's not an issue when you have a great quarterback. It is an issue when you have a bottom five quarterback playing there, which Drew Locke has been the last two years and Joe Flacco the same at the same. So I definitely hear you. I just, I don't have as much of a, a hardcore stance as you do in the Vic Fangio realm, but uh, let's talk. I wanted to get on this a little bit. We talked about it a little bit um, right. yesterday on Twitter as well. Yep. Tell me on Jacoby Brissett, because I know that I, right. I put, I lump him he's, the same with Nick. He's Foles, not Andy Dalton. Andy Dalton. <laughs> <laughs> Sold. <laughs> I mean, if he's okay. cheaper than Andy Dalton, then heck All yeah, right. that's probably the thing that makes the difference for me. But yeah. uh, I just kind of lump him as the same. And I, I have yeah. my full disclosure. My two best friends are both Colts fans. I watch I a good that. amount of Colts games. And um, I've had to Hi, deal with watching Jacoby Brissett and a great offensive line just not do anything. He's a mediocre athlete, and he's got a noodle arm. And I just he might be able to run the Shermer offense better than Mock because I think he has better accuracy and better anticipation. Uh, but still, it's just like you know we're spinning the wheels at that point. I don't think he has a noodle arm at all, man. I think oh. he has a. I think he. I think he is actually pretty inaccurate in terms of passing, mm. and and so it's different, man. Because here's my thing with him, dude. He's got a this one of the same problems Drew Locke has. He holds onto the ball way too damn long, and then by then he's in trouble. Nick, you're right. He's not athletic, <laughs> to say the least. Go watch him Unless scramble. Unless you ask uh, Stephen A. Smith. Unless you ask Von Miller, who couldn't sack Jacoby Brissett last year. Oh, Von Miller burn. There we go. Uh, but it's yeah. just not last year. Two years ago, I guess, right? But uh, yeah. full, here's full what, disclosure. I did not watch that game. That was on my wedding day. 
So. Uh, oh, okay. There you go then. Well, <laughs> I watch yeah, even, even better, huh? But uh, no, man, I'm not, it's not that I want to sell people on Jacoby Brissett. It's that he's the same viable option as the other veteran quarterbacks. Now with Phillip Rivers, he, I mean, I think he took like 43 snaps all year and they actually put him in to throw the ball long because they knew Phillip Rivers arm was shot talking yeah. about, you know, Ben Roethlisberger and stuff like that. But dude, I like Jacoby Brissett, the person a ton, dude. This this is a player, yeah. This is a player that that, and you said it last night, man. The, his teammates love him. The community loves him. He's a player that negotiated his own contract twice because he said, I think it was quote, you know, I don't like other people BSing about my stuff. You know, he's an intelligent young man. I think he comes in and immediately gets the respect of the team. I think he gives a little bit more of an offensive identity than an Andy Dalton or a Ryan Fitzpatrick would because Fitz is cool, right? He's, you know, looking like Conor McGregor with the shades down there and the beard and everything. But the Broncos don't need that. I don't need cool. I sound like Colin Cowherd right now. I don't need cool. Uh, we already got cool with Drew Locke. But I just think he's another option, and it's not an option that I'm hearing floated out there, and I want to make Broncos country aware. He is a free agent quarterback, and I seriously doubt he wants to be a backup behind Carson Wentz in returning to Indy. I've also seen his name connected with the San Francisco 49ers as a potential backup, not a starter, but a potential backup. So if you're the Denver Broncos and you're talking to Jacoby Brissett, maybe you tell Jacoby, look, man, we can offer you competition for the number one job. It's going to be yeah. between you and Drew Locke. If Jacoby's willing to take less to do that, I'm in, man. I'm absolutely in because that's less money that we could pay to Justin Simmons. You're going to have a big decision to come up with Cortland Sutton, Dalton Reisner, some of these guys down the line. And the thing has been John Elway hasn't paid his own guys. He pays everybody else's guys. It's going to be interesting to see what George Payton does, specifically with Justin Simmons in the next week or so. Okay, we got DNV coming in here, and I guarantee you, you and I are going to have opposite opinions on this. Um, let me preface this by saying, uh, DNV, let's read it first. Um, what about Cam Newton? Uh, the first thing I will say is you just said you don't want a cool quarterback. Well, that probably means no to you on Cam Newton, but yep. I do think that Cam Newton still has uh, something in the tank and would be a better quarterback than Drew Locke, and he would come in and immediately raise the floor of the team. Um, Drew Cam Newton had his early career with Mike Shula, who is the Broncos quarterback coach. So there is some uh, known quantity there. And in the NFL, it is a who you know league. So that that can matter. I don't know if he's the best fit for Shermer. And Shula, loves, and I come, Shula loves him, by the way. Yeah, I've heard so. I've heard that directly from multiple sources over at the Broncos. Like, And yeah. Cam loves Shula. Those two, yeah. they're, they're boys. I know it's an unlikely pair, but you're right, dude. They're very close, man. Yeah. So the thing with Cam is that you might be able to get him and come in and probably, you know, one, two year deal. It's not a big commitment. I just think that how I don't think we can overstate how bad the offensive surrounding and supporting cast is on that Patriots team. They are trash. It's the worst tight ends in football. I can't even name them off the top of my head. And I go through rosters like on the daily depth charts. Their best wide receiver is Jacoby Myers, who I think was an undrafted free agent. Julian Edelman's a nothing anymore. Uh, their dare, running backs have been bad. I mean, this, this is a you. terrible have, team. How dare you? They have one of our own Chatfield high school's own Dalton Keene, a player that I liked coming out of college. That's the only tight end I know. And he's not even the starting yeah. tight end, Nick. So that kind of proves your point, dude. I think he's like the third string guy. And that's the only tight end I know on that team. It's, it's an awful team. It is terrible and everybody the reason people were saying like oh brady might be fell off i think it has a lot to do with how just absolutely terrible the patriots supporting cast is so if there's somebody who i think is a buy low candidate that you could probably get more out of than meets the eye i think it is cam newton now there's a lot of i guess media and attention that would come with cam newton and obviously the fans here are uh seem like they're very much against it um but that's somebody who i think would raise the floor of this room a lot and also Maybe this is just me getting my hopes up, but if you get a Cam Newton, you're kind of running that style of offense. It opens the door for a Justin Fields. It opens the door for a Trey Lance. And make no mistakes about it. Everybody's talking about, you know, like, oh, what would the Broncos do with quarterback if they draft one early? Like, the independent of drafting a quarterback early, they're going to bring in a veteran quarterback. They have to. It, they can't go into the situation. They're going to bring in a vet. So if you bring in a Cam Newton, you really set yourself up to just really easily pass the torch to a Justin Fields or Trey Lance. That would mean that's interesting, Nick, because that would mean that you've got your veteran, you've got a potential backup in Drew Locke, and then your rookie in the waiting. I mean, yeah. that's a real that's interesting. And Peyton's uh, done I, that many times. I wish exactly. 
I wish now Peyton hasn't done that. His people have done that, and he's been Gilman. a part of yeah. it. So yeah. I got to uh, Yeah, I know it's fair, politically fair. correct, all that <laughs> stuff. But yeah, that's all we have to go off on, right? Because we don't know this guy. And the one thing that you and I don't do is we don't make stuff up and say like we know that George Payton's going to do this. We we don't know. All we can go off of is yeah. the people that he's been associated with. He's a very tight lipped individual, from what I understand. Um, so you know, I guess he's getting up, and I don't know if you guys have seen that Broncos country's. Um, Go look at the videos on Twitter. He's getting up at 4 a.m., get 4.50 a.m., getting the grind going and all this stuff. And it's interesting because you start to wonder, they're backing up the the Brinks trucks a little, not Brinks trucks, but they're backing up the truck a little bit saying, oh, we don't have a problem with Drew. We really like Drew and, and things of that nature. Again, a little bit of spin. Look, because you Don't see what I'm doing with this hand. Look over at this one right here, Drew. Yeah, we love you. Let's yeah. make all these moves. That's yeah. you know, Deshaun Watson talking you about were, that, Chris guy, talking we about We weren't going to trade you to Detroit, Drew. We wouldn't do you like that, man. George loves you. You're great. Everything's fine. Uh, again, some of that spin that you got to watch out for. But as we wrap up our seven o'clock show, Mundungus is coming in heavy hitter tonight, buddy. I really appreciate your uh, your help, your donations. If Denver is really serious about sticking with Pat Shermer, how do you not go and get Mac Jones? Perfect. Shermer scheme fit. Mundungus, here's something I got to tell you, man, and you're going to tell me my own philosophy right back to me. Mac Jones is too rich a pick for me at number nine. He really is, man. And now he was the bell of the ball at the senior bowl, but that ball didn't have a lot of uh, other dancers in it, so to speak. So, you know, it's really tough to sometimes overhype a guy. And maybe I was just a little too excited after seeing his performance, but uh, Mac Jones, the Broncos spent some time with him on the phone during the senior bowl and stuff like that. They're giving him a look just like they're giving all those other quarterbacks a look, but <sighs> Pat Shermer, I don't like it. I don't like it. I would much rather have Vic Fangio here than Pat Shermer, but I just Shermer doesn't bend to any of his quarterbacks, dude. He doesn't bend to any of them. It's his system. It's his way or the highway. And the successful NFL teams right now in the NFL are bending to their quarterbacks. And you see the results. Pat Shermer does not do that, Nick, and it bothers me. So Mac Jones, Deshaun Watson, whoever it is, <laughs> Pat Shermer going to bend to them? My opinion, no, no way. I would say Shermer did bend a little bit down the stretch this year. You saw far less empty sets. You saw far more under center plays. You saw far more 12 personnel moving away from 11 personnel, stuff that Drew Locke was struggling with because if there's more reads out there, he tends to struggle. So that's, I mean, just is what it is. Uh, so I do think that each manipulated the offense a little bit down the stretch to kind of figure out what was working and what wasn't working. But uh, I do think also he's running a system that was meant for the Peyton Mannings, the Joe Flacco's, the Case Keenum's of the world, you know, like, not these athletic quarterbacks like Kyle Orton could come in and run this team. Um, so, I mean, I don't want to come down here and, you know, totally poop on Mac Jones, but I do think he is being a little bit inflated where you, this quarterback class, and I know it's kind of been a point of a uh, point of conversation is like, Oh, 2021 versus 2022. You don't know what 2022 is going to be. I think 2022 has great depth. I don't think it has the heavy hitters that 2021 has. There's, there's not these obvious tools, guys like Trevor Lawrence, like Justin Fields, like Trey Lance and Zach Wilson's the guy who great arm wasn't healthy. Now he's healthy and is whipping around. Next year's got great depth. It just does not have the obvious athlete arm talent guys. Uh, so outside of uh, Spencer Rattler, who apparently is just a horse's behind. Uh, so yikes, uh, Oklahoma. If there's any Oklahoma fans out there, I'm sorry about that. Uh, but Mac Jones, I think he's getting artificially inflated because there's just not depth in this class. So, and I, he is a fit, but it just doesn't do it for me. And how many great quarterbacks are there in the league right now that are under 32 years old? Let's, let's put the bar there that are, that limited athletically you just you're limiting your whole offense uh -oh. right like if you if your quarterback can't do it uh, we got jody jody's uh -oh, jody uh -oh. i gotta read this i gotta read this jody i gotta read this jody moncrief and speaking of reading um jody must have been reading because you wrote a fantastic piece that i'm just gonna say went viral dude it was a good one man i think bleacher report picked it up uh and that's another thing guys all of our writers at my hot huddle man we are busting our tails and go look at some of our work man it's getting picked up by yahoo bleacher report all these other outlets and i know this one hit hot drew Locke is garbage and the o was dumbed down for him 
And I know we've only got a few more minutes left, but obviously this is in reference to an article that Nick wrote talking about Tony Pauline on his podcast, you know, talking about he was down at the Senior Bowl. I was down at the Senior Bowl as well. And he had uh, basically heard that the offense was more or less dumbed down for Drew Locke. He was being spoon fed things. And guys, I was there when that conversation happened, when he was hearing some of those things and talking with a person in the know. And uh, I just, I find it fascinating that this is news to Broncos country. Uh, you know, this it, something we didn't know. This is something we've been talking about for, you know, the last year, Nick. And uh, it's just, it's interesting to me, man, because Pat Shermer, when he did, cave and finally turn that stubborn switch off drew lock did well he played pretty decent uh yeah. i'm not gonna say great enough to be the starting quarterback but he played well and then he goes away from that i just i don't get it man i don't get it i don't know like we're gonna be having this conversation for a while now and i guess you know worst case scenario next year is that you see something like the 2017 jags or the 2018 bears where the broncos with a solid roster i mean they have some work to do on the defense on the personnel side, but still a solid roster. Uh, they carry a bad quarterback to a good record. I mean, that can happen. We Mitchell Trubisky, uh, Blake Bortles. I mean, they went to the AFC championship game with Saxonville and Blake Bortles is now, yep. I mean, I mean, he's trash. So, you know, it's a concern, but still we'll see what happens. I think that I'm not ready to fully embrace the full on drew lock hate. Um, but we have Jody coming in and Josh Allen made great leaps here through. So that means a lock will too. I mean, you're talking about an outlier there and depending on an outlier is don't dangerous. Do that, business, Jody. It's a dangerous don't do business. it, Jody. Don't do it, Jody. I know uh, we love Josh too, but don't do it. They're two different. Oh, he, he's at the hand of the face. No, he's, he, he's saying, he's saying uh, that it's stupid. Okay. To say we're that. making, <laughs> we're making all, right, all right. All right. Good, good. I'm like, you guys are going to make him between me and Nick and being the drew lock haters and the yeah. running backs matter and everything else. But we'll wrap up the show here. I'll get a couple more in Let's, from Gary. Real Smith. quick, These two flipping booch. And I got to say, you can embrace the full on drew lock hater. I am definitely going to have a little bit more <laughs> flexibility here. Where okay. if, what if drew lock develops and becomes a great quarterback? That was coming. Hope you guys got good seasoning. I hope you're right. Because when, if Drew when Lock- is that going to happen? Year three, year four, year five? Patience, <sighs> Nick. Patience. We got it. He's a kid. He's not a kid. He's a freaking uh, grown man, dude. Fifty I starts was, in college. Yeah, I know, he's, and he's I, I don't raw. mean to go off on a rant here, but like I was, I was thinking about today, and I'm like, dude, how do we make Drew Lock? I don't want to say tougher, but like you know, grizzlier or something, dude. Like, can he grow a beard? Does he need to start smoking cigarettes? Do you know, does he need to start laying down the scotch like Aaron Rodgers? I don't know, man, but I need him to be that alpha. And I don't see an alpha. I just don't see it. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, maybe unfortunately for you, we're fixing to find out what happens this year, year three. I'd say Drew Locke is probably the starter this year. He's going to get competition. I do think if they bring in an Andy Dalton or whatever, if he struggles and st- still throws stupid interception, puts the ball in harm's way, they might go a different direction. But I, th- I do think Drew Locke is going to get the chance again this year, and we'll see what comes of it. But uh, everybody's going to get what they want. I just I don't want uh, what we don't want. We need to set this up. If if people get Drew Locke year three. The crow goes both ways, right? Like I want everybody who is like, oh, you just got to be patient. And if he doesn't do it, if he doesn't come around, then, you know, here we are. And probably in a worse situation draft wise, you know, to we'd have to trade up even farther to go get a worse quarterback than what would be available this year. So right. uh, we'll see. But, uh, <laughs> you know, um, here we go. I'm Drew's age and look 40. I'll be his spokesperson. Well, um, <laughs> there you go. Really, I love it, man. <laughs> but, uh, I, I love it. Yeah. I, well, and I don't know, man. I don't know if Drew can do a mustache or he's just such a handsome guy. I don't know that he, you know, would want to go the beard way or anything like that, dude. It's, it's interesting, man. And I'm just each day changes Nick and something new comes out every day. And who yeah. knows what tomorrow has in store. The one thing tomorrow has in store, the huddle up guys are back guys. So be sure to yeah. check them out. They're starting between 6 PM and 6 15 with Chad Jen and Zach Kelberman. Be sure to check out Nick's show, Building the Broncos with Carl as well. And then we've also got the Dove Valley Deep Divers on Friday nights, Tuesday nights with Carl and Nick for Building the Broncos. Go check it out. Those cats are funny. Dude. Crazy Carl. I love Crazy Carl, man. Carl's the man. Uh, flipping Pooch coming in as we wrap up the show. Give Drew some cigs. Ha ha. Yeah, I know. I was telling my wife, I'm like, I don't want to go on my show and be like, let's promote tobacco use to our starting quarterback. But tongue in cheek. Man, it worked for him. 
Yeah, tongue in cheek, man. I just like I need some Jay Cutler like look, you know, that cigarette in his mouth where at least he's grizzly looking, even though he was kind of a pain in the tail. But Nick, dude, this hour flew by, man. This was so much fun. Broncos country just they came with it tonight, man. They absolutely came with it. Came in hot. McDungus, appreciate all your support. The rest of the super chat superstars and guys, DM Nick at yeah. Nick Kendall, MHH, DM me at Luke Patterson LP. John also, I think it's John K M H H. Yes, J-O-N-K-A-Y. Yep, and he's nodding his head. Yeah, DM John as well, too, guys, so we can talk more. Um, Zach was one of our big super chat guys tonight. I've been rapping with Zach all week on Twitter, DM. So you guys, like Nick said, you do not have to give a donation. We appreciate all of our donations, but uh, know that this chat is free, man. We just, we're just we football junkies. We can't get enough, Nick. It's Mile High Insiders, dude. I absolutely love it. Yeah, thank you guys very much. Obviously, a lot of different opinions and directions about where the Broncos can go. You know, you bring up a name like Andy Dalton or Cam Newton or Ben Roethlisberger in the chat lets you know. But guys, this Broncos going to bring in a quarterback and it's definitely a chance that it's somebody that not everybody's going to love. But, you know, just got to prepare for it. Got to look underneath every stone because that's what Peyton's doing right now. And we're going to talk about every single possibility as well. That's what makes the offseason great, guys. And uh, we're going to keep bringing it to you guys during this offseason. That's going to do it for my high insiders tonight though, guys, check out my high huddle.com. A lot of draft content, a lot of quarterback talk, a lot of other stuff going on there. Cap conversations. I mean, we got it all there. We got every single guy covering a bunch of different stuff and uh, you know, new articles every day. Like Luke said, uh, also go to iTunes, leave us a five-star rating and a comment. Uh, probably the most important thing you guys can do to help us is like subscribe and share. If you're joining us on YouTube, uh, click those thumbs up. If you are on Facebook, that really helps us a lot. Become a, a supporter. Uh, join our Facebook page as well. The mile high huddle, super fans, um, a lot of good conversations going on there as well. Uh, follow us on Twitter at mile high huddle and at MHI underscore football pod. Uh, Luke, you got any plans the rest of the night? I see a lot of people, um, Coming in here, Locke's good for 1.5 turnovers a game. Elway could be the guy. Thanks, guys. Great pod. You know, thank you guys in the chats. But, uh, Luke, plans the rest of the night. Anything fun going on? I'm going to go to sleep, man. I'm an old man. I was telling John, I went out for, I went out on the town for a few cold pops last night. I'm so much more, uh, not a guy that goes out, not because of the world or anything, just because I'm a homebody now, man. I've got yeah. a kid. I'm, I've got a wife, the dogs, everything. Dude, I went out, had a few cold pops, and I'm hurting. I'm hurting, man. I can't. I'm not a kid anymore, dude. And I'm not a big drinker or anything, man, but I'm hurting. So, uh, yeah, my exciting life, I'm going to bed, buddy. I'm going to bed. It's snowing here in the Mile High City. Thoughts and prayers to everybody experiencing cold and hard times. We know it's a tough time for uh, the country in general, the world in general. So if we could just reach out and make you smile for at least an hour, because I know you guys do that for us. I know Nick gets super excited to come on. I do, too. This is a blast, man. This means so much to me. Nick, you kicked butt today, dude. John's always killing it as well. And I just appreciate the conversation because, guys, it's okay to disagree. That's the biggest thing. I just want to, like, finally say that. It's okay to disagree because it doesn't mean it has to be personal either. This is football, and I'm wrong all the time. Nick's right all the time. And it's just one of those things, man, where it's okay to debate. It's okay to get after each other. And it's fun, dude. If we all agreed, this would be boring, Nick, and I wouldn't have fun. Yeah, and I guess Luke, I've been I keep saying I'm trying to take the middle ground here, but Tony Neff is saying I've been talking about how much I hate Drew Locke for every show for four months now. I'm just a Drew Doubter, guys. I guess I'm not I'm not a hater. You're I'm a in. Drew Doubter. You're I'm, in, dude. I'm You're fighting in. it, man. I, I'm saying right. that it's not likely he becomes a top ten quarterback, but it's still possible. So you're saying there's a chance. Dumb and dumber. Let's get out of here, guys. We appreciate you. Stay safe. Um, we really do appreciate you guys. And uh go Broncos. Go Broncos.